everyone. Good morning. You're watching Market Fatafat right here on Niti. Now the show where we get you a wrap of all the big movers and shakers today in trade. I'm Ubina Kapasi. Markets at this point of time attempting a bit of a bounce back after the massive carnage witnessed yesterday. We're off the day is low. 11,600 yet again reclaimed by the Nifty. The Sensex is higher by 94 points. So yes, the gains are more or less limited. But we are in the green. It's mixed back. It's a mixed bag from the broader markets because while the mid cap index as well has sort of rebounded, the small cap index continues to languish in the red. But this show is all about the individual movers and shakers. So let's bring on board our research analyst as well as technical expert to take us through those stocks. So we have with us as always Somia Sharma, ET Now's in-house research analyst Kunal Botra. Uh, on the technicals and we're joined also by Himen Kaparia of KR Chosi Securities to give us a technical perspective on individual stocks. Good morning to all of you and let's kickstart the show with the very first talk. SL Propac, big, big news maker. Yesterday, the company announced that Blackstone will be buying a 51% stake in the counter for a 134 rupee price point per share, uh, which means Blackstone will essentially be committing almost about more than $400 million in the company. The stake will be bought from the promoter, Ashok Goyal Trust, which incidentally owns approximately 57% stake. So Ashok Goyal Trust will still be retaining a small minority stake in SL Pro Bank. Stock price, 0.7% uh, has, so not that much of a reaction, but yeah, important news coming in. It's a shareholding reject for SL Pro Pack. And of course, not to mention there'll be an open offer as well for the minority retail shareholders. Okay, uh, Kunal, ICICI Prudential, what is it that's uh, causing the stock to be on your radar? A couple of weeks back, there was this uh, you know strong volume breakout which happened for the stock. Uh, you know, I think it was on the back of some sort of a news flow for ICICI Pro. And that happened somewhere closer to 335, 340 levels. And post that, we've seen that the stock has just about changed its range completely. Now on the daily charts, you know, there's some price breakouts. It's one of the few stocks which is moving up, uh, you know, higher, even in a market which is getting extremely volatile and a bit choppy. So I believe that the trends for ICICI Pro, both on the volume as well as on the price fronts, are extremely positive. And that indicates that the stock could be, uh, you know, sailing up high, higher even from current levels. Stock is at uh, you know 370 plus levels. I believe uh, as a short term play, you could look at a 385 to 390 potential uh, in a target range for ICICI Pro. Okay, 1% higher for ICICI Prudential. Uh, Samia Reliance Industries and lots uh, of rejig right now in the counter. Uh, well, not in the counter, but in the company. Now it looks like uh, they are in talks with other entities as well for stake sale. Yes, Mubina. Well, this is an ET Now exclusive. Well, according to sources, what we're gathering is the company is in talks with SoftBank's Vision Fund for stake sale in Geo, and SoftBank is doing a due diligence for Geo and its tarf and fiber assets. What we're gathering is the SoftBank may invest close to about two to three uh, billion US dollars in Reliance Geo, and is very keen on Geo's tech and telecom e and e-commerce e uh, integrated play. Well, uh, Reliance had recently moved their Geo's fiber and tar assets to Indeed structure and now uh, SoftBank is uh, pretty much interested uh, in this uh, company and uh, particularly in Geo. Well, uh, Reliance will be using all these funds in order to, you know, reduce the amount of uh, debt uh, on its balance sheet. Well, there were concerns that uh, the uh, books, uh, the debt on the books was increasing. So in order to you know, come up with uh, this fund would this these funds would help in reducing the debts on the balance sheet of right. it. Yeah, I do remember that uh, SoftBank's Vision Fund 2.0 is what we are calling it because Masa Yoshi Sen has been um, collecting funds from big big investors. Saudi King is one of them, hundred billion dollar tech fund, and he wants to look for new young age companies. And it looks now that he has his eyes set on Geo. So interesting development over there. It's a hundred billion dollar fund, the Vision Fund 2.0. Okay, moving on. Hey, Main, let's talk about Sun Pharma. You know, uh, this stock has seen uh, relatively, it has relatively been a little more resilient through the carnage we've seen in the last two, three trading sessions. What would you make of this move? Well, Mubina, frankly speaking, it's been uh, sideways for some time, but uh, currently it's getting oversold on the intraday charts. Uh, crossover buys are coming in. A bound seems to be underway. So I would hold with a stop loss of 450 to a target of 470. Once again, currently it looks like a bounce and not a rally. 
Moving on to the next stock, Lupin. Morgan Stanley has upgraded this pharma major to an overweight from equal weight with the target at 1,094 rupees per share. And look at the way the stock price is reacting to that upgrade. It's 2.8% higher, though, of course, it's now off the day's high. Now, Morgan Stanley says they do believe Lupin appears well positioned for a recovery, and hence the upgrade is coming in. 854 right now for Lupin. Let's see where the stock goes. Kunal, let's talk about Yes Bank. We saw massive underperformance yesterday, uh, a, a quite a decline, a 7% fall coming in in yesterday's trading session. Today, however, a bit of a recovery seen. What is, the, is that you're observing? So, yeah, I think the stock has corrected more than uh, you know 15%, 14% uh, in the last one week, two weeks of this uh, price correction for the stock price. But when you look at it on the short-term charts and especially the way uh, you know price-wise as well as indicator-wise the stock is poised, you know, it's entered into some uh, extreme oversold uh, territories, both in terms of prices as well as in terms of indicators. Now, uh, you know, in a, in a market which is predominantly uh, you know rallied on the on the back of strength in Bank Nifty, if you have one of the private sector banks which has done pretty well in the last uh, you know three four months, if that stock comes back to a strong support territory, we ideally take it as a uh, you know a strategy to go for a contra buy. So I believe at current levels of 240 odd, Yes Bank could be a good uh, contra buy opportunity at current levels. Positional targets. Could be kept at 255 to 60 range for a stop loss at 232. Okay, so that's the view coming in on a yes bank. Soumya Sriram companies, what do reports suggest over there? Why are these stocks buzzing? Well, uh, reports suggest that Paramal uh, is interested in and is in talks to sell uh, his uh, st the company's stake in Sriram group of companies. Um, if uh, and is in talk the come the. Com the the company is in talks with Mahindra and others and it is the second attempt by Paramal to reduce the involvement in the Sri Ram Group companies. Well, uh, what we're gathering is the stake in, in all the three companies is valued at an approximate value of 9,000 crore rupees uh, and Paramal owns 20% uh, in the unlisted holding company Sri Ram Capital and 10% each in Sri Ram Transport Finance and Sri Ram City Union Finance. Uh, so this is uh, what we're gathering from the reports. The stock is reacting to the news flow. All right, so that's uh, the news coming in on Sri Ram group of companies. Hey, mean BEML, you have a sell on bounce here. Why is that? Well, uh, frankly speaking, we are in a shorter term downtrend. I have a feeling we are on the cusp of entering an intermediate downtrend. There is an 8% short built up, crossover sell, stock look weak, below the 55 day moving average. The sell on bounce. So, uh, uh, Hemi seems to be a bit negative on a BEML. Gail, meantime, this is an interesting news piece coming in. Uh, it looks like the company has emerged as the H1 bidder for seven ILNFS wind power projects. And with this um, acquisition, it looks like the lenders as well to ILNFS's wind projects will not have to take any haircuts. So, uh, the price point for the lender seems to be very good. For Gail, however, it's a complete payout um, you know, to the full valuation that they will be shelling out the stock price is down two percent kunal psu banking names bank of india is what you have identified what are you observing so yeah i think uh, you know as i said earlier that most of the banking names they're trying to you know correct from their previous swing highs you know the pattern which is being observed is that these stocks manage to come back to their uh, you know, long-term averages or medium to moving averages and then the trend sort of continues for bank of india it's uh, absolutely similar the stock is now exactly in between the 50 and the 200 moving average and both of them are, uh, you know, just about this 92 to 93 range. So I believe, uh, you know, looking at the patterns overall for, uh, you know, the stocks uh, on the PSU banking names and for Bank of India, I believe that this 90 support should be a very strong support and that support should hold. So keeping that as a stop loss, I would recommend a buy on Bank of India for a target of approximately 97 to 98. Okay, so that's Bank of India and uh, Kunal seems to be pretty optimistic on this one. Uh, Soumya, what does Prince Peace have to say on Indigo? Well, the Credit Suisse is maintaining an uh, outperforming stance on uh, Indigo. Well, they say that they're likely to benefit uh, uh, due to the entire jet situation and this would, you know, turn in favour of Indigo. So, they maintain a share in new launches so far and also the yields for the company would remain elevated. Uh, they've lifted their target price from 1650 to 1800 per share when it comes to Indigo and maintaining an outperforming stance, although the stock price is actually uh, down by 1%. Uh, but the news here uh, for the credit series, they remain uh, outperforming, they maintain outperform on the stock. Alright, 1474, the stock price is down. I mean, Karnataka Bank, year two, you seem, you seem to be pretty negative. And you know, for the last couple of years, the stock really hasn't done much in terms of investor returns. Uh, your view? Well, we've seen short-term weakness. Uh, we've seen a distribution pattern on the daily chart. 
A breakdown at 131 signifies weakness. We've seen some near-term support in form of the 55-day exponential moving average, which could lead to an unsustainable recovery. Once again, there is negative divergence reflected by the mechanical indicators, crossover sales. I would suggest a sell on bounce simply because the support and a small bounce is in the offering. All right, uh, that's the word on a Karnataka bank at 128 rupees. Tejas Networks has delivered its numbers for the fourth quarter. Consolidated revenue stood at 265 odd crore rupees. On a sequential basis, it's a jump of 51%. Operating profit was 35 crores and the uh, profit before tax saw a nice 49% jump. Um, a pretty good set of numbers, no complaints over there. Margins, however, did compress a tad bit, but you know, uh, the profitability has been very strong on a year-on-year basis. 24% uh, jump at 36 crore rupees. 273 crores revenue, like I said, but it's up almost about two times. So good going for the company. Not just that, the company has also said that it's been granted six patents, which brings its cumulative grant of patents to 106. So that as well is an interesting parameter. Uh, Somya DHFL, what's the news over here? And by the way, just as we speak, I'd request my producer as well to show the stock price because it's shown quite a spike in the last couple of minutes. Yes, Mavina stock was in focus for uh, its bulk deal wherein Robeco sold 25.2 lakh shares at the price of 160.7 per share. In fact, this is the second straight day uh, when uh, Robeco had sold uh, shares of this company. Uh, the company, uh, the stock seems to have uh, paired all the opening losses and is, green, is trading in green today and is up by over 4.5%. Four, 4 yeah, and don't forget, yesterday as well, uh, DHFL had seen quite a crack come by in the stock price. Another stock which had seen bulk deal activity and had fallen significantly was ADAG Stock Reliance Capital. But today, what an attempt made to bounce back despite the fact that Access Trustee, which by the way has continued to sell um, its shares in the ADAG Group stocks, has sold about 52 lakh shares at 137.5 rupees per share. But nevertheless, it's a bounce coming in in Reliance Capital stock price from the drop witnessed yesterday. Okay, we'll do one thing. We'll take a quick breather right here on this edition of Market for Tafford. Stay tuned. The countdown will continue when we return. Welcome back. You're watching Market for Tafford right here on ET Now. Let's continue with the countdown of big movers and shakers. Samia, what's the news on an LVB? Well, Lakshmi Vilas Bank has set... Uh, the price as 112 per share for its preferential allotment to India Bulls Housing Finance. In fact, the stock has today snapped four days of losses and is trading in green. Uh, although the company has received the uh, approval of the board, it is yet to receive a nod from shareholders and most importantly RBI for its uh, swift merger with India Bulls Housing Finance. All right, moving on to the next stock, 1.4% half on LBB. AU Small Finance has delivered its Q4 numbers. Uh, it's been a good set of numbers because, of course, on the asset quality front, it has disappointed a little. But NII has gone up 35% at 387 crore rupees. Profitability as well has come in at 118 crore rupees. So on that parameter, it's done well. But on the gross NPA front, it's at 2.04%. And uh, I think net NPA is at 1.29%. So that is something that you must watch out for. Uh, now, Jubilant Food, you know, after we've been seeing a lot of pricing action in this stock. What's your view here? So, you know, the stock is correcting when you look at the monthly charts or maybe, you know, slight, uh, you know, higher degree charts. You would say that, yes, the stock is corrected from 1480 levels to almost, uh, you know, 150 rupees to 1320, 1330 zone. But when you look at it on the hourly charts, I think the picture is completely different because on the hourly charts, uh, you know, even though the prices have made a new low, but the RSI indicators have made a higher low. And when that happens, that's generally a setup of uh, you know a bullish RSI divergence it's also a setup that on short term charts uh, you know the probability is very high that the stock could be nearing a short term bottom so keeping that uh, into perspective i believe jubilant food could be a good buy or a contra buy at current levels i would expect another 40 to 50 rupees jump on the stock price in the next uh, you know four to five trading sessions so keeping 1320 as a stop loss would recommend a buy on jubilant food okay so it's a buy on a jubilant food so amya biocon what's the news here uh, well, the company would be considering a final dividend and bonus issue in its upcoming board meeting on April 25th. In fact, the stock has today snapped a two-day of uh, continuous losses uh, and is also supported by robust traded volumes, although it's off from the day's high today. But nevertheless, it's still a green, trading in green. All right, yeah, off the day's high, but still 0.8% higher. Hey, May, let's talk about Madison Sumi as well, which, uh, you know, after that series of negative news, etc., has attempted a bounce back today. However, it's down in the red. What would be your recommendation? 
well uh, the stock hasn't done much mobina uh, remains in a longer term downtrend but like you said uh, an oversold situation has led to some respite and it might not be over so i would say a hold with a stop loss of 147 it has underperformed but the downside appears slightly limited at this point in time all right moving on to the next stock bharti airtel uh, telecom stocks certainly are a buzz with all the fundraising plans they have now msci has actually decided to increase their weightage in bharti airtel morgan stanley believes that with this increased weightage uh, 25 basis points in msci india can lead to a flow of 80 to 90 million dollars so bharti airtel will be in focus but the stock price today is down by a little over 1% kunal what's your view on hcl tech So uh, you know, as was the case with a lot of the IT stocks, which showed uh, you know uh, completely different pictures. For example, TCS, which managed to do a breakout, HCL Tech is forming a bullish pennant formation. Now it's been one of the few large cap stocks uh, which is trading at the upper end of uh, you know its trading uh, you know bands since last so many days and weeks. Uh, and in this process of a bullish uh, pennant formation, I think the stock could be due for a breakout. 1120 is the breakout level for HT uh, for HCL Tech. and the stock is just about i think 1.5% away from those breakouts if the stock breaks out of this 1120 mark then you, it could start a new uptrend which should take the stock to almost 1200 to 1220 levels so it's a big breakout which could be due for hcl tech about those 1120 mark right so amya infibeam had also seen a lot of pricing action recently uh, what's the news over here well uh, infibeam along with 33 other names have uh, exited and they have been excluded from the fno list well some of the names include alabad bank sizlon energy jet ava cg power alabad bank among others in fact the stock today happens to be a top loser on nifty it index and is also among the top losers on nifty 500 index it's been down uh, by over 3.8% today and has been losing for the last 3 days and has lost close to about more than 50, 14% in uh, last 3 days All right. Uh, we're watching out for the results of ACC as well. The first quarter numbers, revenues are seen growing 7.6 percent. Uh, uh, pardon me. Before that, let's go to India Cements. Uh, I'm sorry. In the in the order, stock number 24, Himin. Um, like I said, we're watching out for cement company numbers today. Is ACC tomorrow's Ultra Tech Cement. But ahead of those important cement numbers, India Cements is declining. What's your view? Well, once again, uh, 106, 114. For the range, we've given a downward breakout from there. Seems to have entered a shorter-term downtrend, uh, and we've had negative divergences by the mechanical indicator date uh, indicators crossover sells. Everything seems to suggest that uh, the move from 74 to 116 seems to be over. It's a sell on dogs. Sell on rise is what he main is recommending. Okay, ACC. We are expecting the numbers. Revenues are seen at 3,900 crores, higher by 7.6 percent. Profits are seen higher by 33 percent on the back of the significant margin expansion from 13.6 percent in the corresponding quarter to 15.9 percent. Uh, so essentially, we are expecting that the company will benefit on account of the sharp price rise that was witnessed in Feb 2019. Average realizations are seen jumping 2 percent sequentially because of uh, uh, the price. movement we saw in south india watch out for all of that and head of the numbers the stock is higher kunal igl is something you've been flagging off for some time what's the reason yeah the reason uh, you know it's absolutely very clear because uh, you know mobina i think this has been one of the few stocks which has gone through a steady uptrend uh, you know it's a low beta name so you know those whenever the stock uh, you know restarts a new trend for itself because of that nature of uh, nature of low beta the trends seem to last long and i think similar is the case for igl now on the daily charts the reason for flagging of the stock today is the you know a candlestick pattern which is a bullish hammer pattern on the daily chart so i think the stock closes at this 314 316 levels or slightly above this then it could confirm a you know a bullish hammer pattern which is a sign of a reversal uh, so igl could be looking to uh, you know for a btsc trade at current levels uh, for a target of 320 322 All right. Uh, so, Amir Shilpa, America has been seeing a lot of uh, momentum of late in the green today as well. It continues to rise. Well, yes, Mubina. In fact, for the last uh, five days, the stock has been gaining. Uh And in the last two days, the stock has gained uh, approximately three to four percent. Well, this is on back of uh, uh, the company receiving U.S. FDA approval for its uh, AN, uh, ANDA busulfan uh, injection, which is a generic version of uh, busulflex injection, which is used for the treatment of uh, leukemia. In fact, this drug has an approximate size of uh, over 32.8 million U.S. dollars in uh, United States. The stock has been gaining today by 4.4 percent. <laughs> Okay well unfortunately we're out of time on this edition of the show so thanks to all of you for joining in him and to you as well for giving your technical strategies we'll wrap it up coming next is markets at noon